This is the PixInsight process tutorial for the process Binarize. You find this process in Process, Intensity Transformation, and there it is. So this is one of these beauties where you find nothing about it, what it does. There is, as you can see, no documentation in PixInsight. There is nothing else practically when you Google it that nobody did a tutorial until now. All I found was a very outdated um, directory of PixInsight processes where it stated that this process would actually binarize a picture in a sense that it leaves it with either black or white pixels. And funny enough, that's exactly what it doesn't do. <laughs> so let's see what it really does and for what it could be useful. So we have here a preview button, that's already good. And now you already see the mess starts. So we can either choose actually an RGB picture to have joined RGB channels, or we can state that we want to have them individually. So let's go to individually to start with and let's put everything on one, then the picture is black. So now the interesting part is if we now, for example, move the red channel up, now the red stars appear or the red in the stars, and that's obviously full blown. So here it goes binary, either the pixel is on or is off. And I can now slowly, slowly get the whole screen red. And I can do the same obviously with the green and with the blue, but again, it's the color with appears, it's not black or white, like the word binarize would make you guess. If you go with the joint, then actually everything appears at once, and depending on what the strongest color is, it's the color that it appears in. So for what could we use something like this? So we could use it for a star mask. But then again, for that, we have range selection. Then ironically, range selection does exactly what you would assume binarize would do. It gives you a black and white uh, mask. So this is actually what, what I thought based on the description I would get over here with binarize. But range selection gives you that. I would also assume that range selection is given all the additional functionalities like the fuzziness, the smoothness, and so on, is the much more modern process than binarize. So we definitely do not need binarize for that. We have a better process for that. Another use case that we could use with star mask is if we run our star mask on this picture. Now, what you could say is that you do not want the star mask in gray tones. And then you could now use binarize. And as you can see, now you get it to whatever degree you want. You get pure white stars, which you could then use for some sort of a mask. I've seen that some people use that in star reduction scripts as one process step. But then again, funny enough, you actually find in star mask this function, binarize. So you do not really have to do it separately, but if you want to do that, you can do that right in star mask. So we don't really need this process for that neither. So what does it boil down to? I think first of all that binarize is probably a rather old, outdated process. I believe that it might have some usage in some complex scripts, and that it's also that's a reason why it's still here. And as a standalone process, the only and really the only use case I could see if, for example, out of whatever strange reason you would say, I want now only the red channel, you know, a star mask of only the red channel, and I want to block that out, then this might provide that to you. But I scratch my head why you would want to do that. So bottom line, for me, no use case at all. I would just ignore that. That said, if you actually are <laughs> someone who uses this process and he knows some great um, use case about it, please leave it in the comment below. I would be really thrilled hearing what you can use or for what it's good 
So as always, I hope this was helpful or entertaining or whatever. Um, if it was, please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and see you next time. Clear skies.